Now there will be a uh, few kinds of reaction that alkene would be showing and the most important of them would be addition reaction. There will be addition reaction of various reagent and we'll begin with HX. So let's begin with addition of HX and to keep things simple, let me take a simple alkene. X here can be chlorine, bromine or iodine. Fluorine will not occur. Fluorine we will not take here because the reaction with fluorine would be relatively slow as compared to CLPR and I. So it will not happen readily because HF is a very weak acid and fluoride ion is not a very stable conjugate base. So we avoid HF. We basically will take HCl, HBr and HI. Now when we take this, we get an addition product. Hydrogen and X gets added like this. X generally will have occur on the inner carbon on 2 degree carbon or preferably 3 degree carbon for the reason we would be clear when we see the mechanism but this is how the product we will write the product and let's see the mechanism how it occurs now as I have been encouraging you to start thinking about the mechanism on yourself because that's how the things will start become start seemingly be easy to you now in this case we have a alkene which is electron rich and we have a reagent HX there's nothing else there's a solvent that but we don't have to worry about that there are two reagents now this is a non-polar reagent and this basically will not try to do anything in the reagent in, in the system but HX is a polar molecule halogens have high electronegativity value they will pull the electron from the sigma bond and have X negative del negative have partial negative charge and hydrogen will have del positive partial positive charge. Now there's a problem with hydrogen. Hydrogen is not satisfied with the condition it is living in. Halogen there's no problem because halogen is bigger in size and halogen has high electronegativity value so bearing a small del negative charge is not a problem for X. But bearing a small positive charge is a problem for H because H is a small atom cannot hold electronic density. So even a small amount of charge develops instability on hydrogen. So hydrogen is up, is having a problem and it will seek refuge by having more of electronic density from other suppliers of electron. Now it will look for someone and someone the only one it will find in the system is this alkene and this alkene happens to have high electronic density owing to its pi bond. So hydrogen will urge this pi bond this substrate this alkene having pi bond to donate some electronic density into its orbital alkene being having high electronic density will not have a problem in donating slight electronic density to x so here how all it begins this is step number one x hydrogen will come to alkene and ask for electron now hydrogen will have a bonding anti-bonding orbital it will have the it is making bond by a s orbital which is spherical in shape so the corresponding anti-bonding will also be spherical in shape so this anti-bonding is empty now hydrogen is asking for electron and few electronic density some amount of electronic density is coming so but when electronic density came it came with more amount than it was asked for when that happened, hydrogen have again a problem because the bonding orbital and anti-bonding orbital of hydrogen together can hold at max 2 electron. So when more of the electronic density starts to come in, then there is a problem for accommodating those extra electrons. So those extra electrons can't be accommodated unless some amount of electronic density from the bonding has been dispensed with and those would be dispensed into the orbital of X. So what would happen? A small amount of bond between this carbon and this hydrogen will be made because the electron would be coming via orbital of this carbon into the orbital of this hydrogen. So there will be orbital to orbital transition of electron and that a small amount of bond would be developed between this carbon and hydrogen and a small amount of bond will be broken between this hydrogen and X. 
Now with this new partner carbon, hydrogen will be highly satisfied because carbon doesn't pull electron because carbon has equivalent electronegativity value as hydrogen. The previous partner of X was bullying H. So uh, hydrogen is much more satisfied. So hydrogen will seek for more electron because now it has broken a weaker bond and made a stronger bond. So when that more electron comes in, a bond is further strengthened and a weaker bond is further broken. Now hydrogen is further satisfied because life is becoming good and more giddy for this hydrogen because it is making increasingly a stronger bond and breaking increasingly a weaker bond. So life is progressing for hydrogen. So hydrogen is becoming happy. So it will ask for more number of more amount of electron. More amount of electronic density will come in. This bond will be further strengthened. This bond will be further broken. So it's a continuous progress for hydrogen. When the process continues and this carbon and this hydrogen makes a complete one unit of bond, this bond between hydrogen and this bullying X would be completely broken. So we have a situation where this carbon and this hydrogen forms a complete one unit of bond and this X minus goes away. But the problem is this carbon in love with this hydrogen made a bond but that bond requires electronic density and that electronic density came from this pi bond. Now in this pi bond there were two electrons. One electron was of this carbon's but the other electron belonged to this carbon and while making a bond this carbon required both the electrons. So it pulled away the electronic density corresponding to both the electron to place these two electrons on this position. So in that process this carbon gets devoid of its electron. So the carbon, this carbon will develop a plus charge. Charge neutrality will always be true. The system was neutral, there was no charge and again the system is overall neutral. So this is what will happen in the first step. Hydrogen will form a bond with carbon and another carbon will develop a positive charge. Now this carbon because it is 2 degree and have higher number of hyperconjugating structure is more stable than the one which would have been formed if hydrogen would have been attached to the other carbon and the plus charge would have been formed on this carbon. So but this carbon is a 1 degree carbon so the plus charge on this carbon would have been less stable. So the plus charge preferably will form on the, in, on the inner carbon. So hydrogen preferably will attach to the outer carbon. That's why we have shown hydrogen here on the outer carbon. Fine. Now first step is over. In the second step, now this carbon is having a plus charge. Now life for this carbon is not easy because it has to hold a plus. One unit of charge on its head and this carbon is actually is electron deficient. So it will seek for more number for electronic density from our outer source. Now this X minus has now just have been free from hydrogen and holding minus one unit of charge. Now these two will cite each other and will share a common problem of holding electron of holding charge density. And if they gets bonded to each other, then the problem of both would be resolved. So if they together form a bond. If they together form a bond, if this X minus comes and puts its electron into the orbital of carbon, then both would be neutralized simultaneously and everything once again will be hunky-dory. No problem with anyone, all are neutral, everyone's octet or duplet is complete. So this is how the addition will take place in two steps. Now to <coughs> now the crux of the uh, mechanism is in the first step HX would come H will be added in such a way that the carbocation formed is most stable. Carbocation if it is most stable on the outer carbon it will be formed there. If the carbocation is most stable in the inner carbon it will be formed there. Generally because of hyperconjugating effect the carbocation will be most stable preferably on 2 degree carbon or 3 degree carbon so the hydrogen will get attached preferably to 1 degree carbon. That's step number two. Step number one. In the step number two, the X minus which has been which which came out of HX 
as a result of addition of hydrogen will come and again attack the substrate on the carbon having plus charge and x minus will get attached to c plus so in the first step hydrogen will be added most stable carbocation will be formed as in the case of dehydration we are again seeing that there's a pure carbocation formed here and whenever we have a pure carbocation formed there and if there is a possibility of rearrangement that rearrangement will always occur so before this x minus will come rearrangement is a fast process if there's a possibility of rearrangement rearrangement would have already occurred before this x minus can come and attack so if there's a possibility of rearrangement between step 1 and step 2 there will be rearrangement this carbocation will get rearranged to the most stable position and this x minus will attack to that most stable position not to the position originally carbocation has formed on fine so that would be the two step if there is no rearrangement if there is rearrangement before this x minus can come and attack c plus rearrangement will occur and this x minus will attack to a new rearranged carbocation fine simple enough